All right, everybody. This is Dave, and this is my garage. So what we're doing is just gonna take a quick ride, take a little break from work here. It's towards the end of the day. Realize we got a hurricane moving into Florida, which means Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is gonna be nothing but heavy rain here. Which, we haven't had rain in actually a while, so yeah, it is what it is. It's a little bumming me out because it's, you know, the last weekend before uh, are we recording. Yup. It's the last weekend. Uh, i got to be in uh, Nashville for work next week. And then we've got uh, the track day. I'll get home at like midnight on Thursday night. i got Friday to kind of recuperate and uh, get ready for the track day Saturday up at Road Atlanta. I don't know if I'm going to take this. I know I'm definitely going on the ZX-14. But I just realized, you know, it's like, okay, I'm not going to get to ride between now and the track day. You know, just a little bit after work today and maybe tomorrow. But uh, we've got uh, these new Road 6s on here. And I hadn't even tried them out yet. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go find a couple little twisty roads and just play for a couple minutes and then head back to the house. Finish up my day. So far, you know, how do they feel? Well, they feel like new tires. <laughs> I'm going more by the profile, and the hardest part about, uh, hardest part about, you know, comparing one tire to the other is that when you go from a tire that's fairly worn, even going to the same tire that's new, you're changing the profile of the tire because they tend to get squared off in the middle. And although mine wasn't too bad, it was really the front tire that was starting to to get worn more than the rear. So, uh, but I've gone to the Road 6s, which are very pointy. They're very peaky. So, I'm noticing that the bike does feel... Ooh, nice uh, C8. Yeah. Uh, it does feel very tippy. Not unstably so. Not like it's twitchy. But just even the subdivision, I went to lean, you know, just a tiny bit to you know, make those little turns. And I had to correct myself because it kind of dipped in quicker than I thought it was. Is that because of the new Michelin Road 6s? I don't know. Is it because it's just a new tire versus a sort of worn tire? I don't know. All I can tell you is how these things feel in and of themselves. So, obviously I've only gone, you know, half a mile, so it's not going to be much yet. But I do want to go and eh, we'll go down to Cash Road, see if I can not get stuck behind grandma on an SUV so we can get a little twisty action going I did hear back from uh, Kent up at GMD CompuTrack um, he's not able to get in touch with his distributor until October sometime for uh, the Andriani cartridges and he said but the K-Tech cartridges aren't here in the States, but he can get them from the UK in about a week or two. And he said, frankly, they, they cost a little more. They're like $8.99 for the, for the cartridges, springs, uh, everything you need to rebuild these forks. Get rid of these non-adjustable caps. We'll have preload in both caps with proper valving and adjustments. And on one side will be compression. The other side will be uh, rebound. But at that point, we'll have, you know, proper spirited uh, mountain riding and even uh, light track day duty uh, suspension. I mean, the K-Tech stuff is, you know, a lot of guys will put in their track bikes and stuff like that. So it's going to be a good, uh, a good setup. So um, between that and the Olin Shock, the new tires and stuff, it's got phenomenal brakes, Brembo M50s, braided lines. We got the works. So this, at that point, will be basically, um, well, it's going to be a Thruxton RS with higher bars, which is cool. So a little more comfort. As far as power goes, there's no difference between the Thruxtons and the Speed Twins, motor-wise. Same motor, same tune, same ignition, same cam, same everything. The only difference is a slight difference, which made three horsepower in the throttle mappings, which I've already gotten rid of. So mine right now is putting out, actually I should be putting out a little bit more than a stock Thruxton, but the Thruxton can be unrestricted just like this, and then they're, they're identical. There's no difference. Chassis is the same. The shocks on the back are 
four speed twin or a Thruxton RS. So we'll have, uh, we're gonna have quite the little canyon carver, you know? I'm not gonna win any horsepower races or drag races anytime soon, unless I'm racing Jake. But we're gonna have much more compliant front, much more composed overall suspension. So when I'm in the turns and really wanna push it, I'm not gonna have the bike wallowing around. Dean's gonna have an upcoming video. You know, he just pushed his uh, video out to YouTube of him driving the uh, ZX14 around all day uh, from a couple weekends ago. But um, he jumped on this and ran down Richard Russell, which is one of our favorite roads. And he loved, he liked this more than the ZX14, despite the fact that it's less than half the horsepower. So it was just more his style, the upright seating position and stuff. But we had similar, we had similar feelings on the suspension. You can feel it moving around, and at first it's a little unsettling. Luckily, it doesn't get. What is this jack off doing, dude? Get out the way! All right, we're going around this turd burglar. Yeah, he's sitting there yapping on his goddamn phone. Uh, anyway, which is illegal in Georgia. It's supposed to be hands free, buddy. Yeah, he's still sitting back there just looking around like a moron. So anyway, what was I saying before I was bitching about people not watching where they're going? Oh yeah. Dean was saying, you know, you feel when you first get on the bike, you feel it moving around. You feel it wallowing a little bit. This is the the, the shock is the shocks are pretty dialed in, but they're not matched to the front suspension. So the back does what it wants. The front's eh, where before is the the, the the shock was the weak link, so you tended to focus more on that. You didn't notice as much what the front was going on because the front was the better of the two. Now the front is lagging behind the shocks, so that's why we're going to have to spend some money. I guess out the door will be about three hundred dollars. Or sorry, three hundred two eighty for. Yeah, it's going to cost me about twelve hundred dollars. I didn't want to spend that. I was thinking about getting exhaust, but then I just started thinking about, you know, the exhaust is going to do what? Take eight pounds off the bike. Okay. I could just eat more, more fiber that morning uh, before I ride, and we could drop a few pounds uh, off the bike that way. Um, you know, to make it louder, but it's not going to add, a, you know, a ton of horsepower. They got to pick up one and a half horsepower. Is that worth? You know, the money, eh. So it's like, you know what? What will make a difference? I, you know, I like this. It sounds good. People always comment on how good it sounds. Um, but uh, I think that having... Um, I think having the suspension done, that's something you're going to feel every time you ride. You're going to feel more control. And that's... That's the thing, like, and that's what, uh, going back to what Dean and I were both noticing, we are comparing notes, you know, he's like, you feel it wallowing around, and after a while, you just sort of, you, you just ride around it, and you can, but in the back of your head, it doesn't feel taut and controlled at a level like his Tawono, or even my ZX-14. And that is somewhat mechanical, but also psychologically, if you don't feel as confident, you're not going to push as hard. You're gonna hold back, because you're gonna feel, you're gonna go, oh, what's that feeling? God damn, this thing tips in so easy. I, I, I have to be careful the first few turns, because it almost like over tips in. Feels good though. back end feels like it's higher. I wonder if this tire is taller than the stock one. Because it's definitely just flopping into turns. Not in a bad way. It feels good, but the back end feels like it's higher than it was. And I'm trying to think of how low the tread was on the back, on the other tire. Okay, maybe there was three millimeters off of it? And just going to a new tire? Or is this tire, this tire looks a little narrower, even though they're both 160-60s. It looks a little narrower than the stock tire, but I think it's a little bit taller. And I'm feeling it want to just poof into the turns quicker. It feels great once it's there. It feels very planted, but I definitely feel like my ass end is higher up than it was. 
I've not adjusted the shock ride height. I left it stock. But I, I definitely feel like I'm pitched more forward onto my nuts. Just a little bit. My nuts are very sensitive. I have very, very, very sensitive testes. So they're telling me I'm pitching forward. And that, if that's the case, then that could account for why it feels a little sharper steering. Anyway, I have the worst freaking ADD. Please, I apologize. Try to keep up here. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not making it easy. But back to what Dean was saying. You, you know, you feel the... It's not twitchiness. It's never truly out of sorts, but you're very you're very keenly aware of the bike moving around and underneath you. And that's because the front and the back aren't going up and down at exactly the same rate. So what do I mean by that? Well, I've got the right proper springs in the back for my weight. The preload is set, the damping is set. And so all those things working together don't match the front. The front I can't adjust. I got no compression, no re uh, rebound, and no preload. So it is what it is. And so what happens is when you're when you're in a plane, so imagine this is the bike. My fingertips are the front wheels, my wrist is the back wheels. When you're in a turn, you want the bike, you know, you hit a bump, the bike should go uh, like that as a, as a system. The whole bike goes into the turn uh, when you hit a bump. When the front and back are out of sync, it might do this. The back goes slower or faster than the back. And so then it does this. They're not going together, it's pitching a little bit. And what happens when it does that is that it changes your steering geometry. If the back goes down and compresses more or quicker than the front, then you're basically raking, you know, you're, you're extending your rake and you're slowing your steering and you want to run a little wide. If the back goes much firmer and doesn't go as much as the front, then you're sharpening up your steering angle temporarily and you're you're gonna want to turn in and it's gonna feel a little bit twitchier and as it's bouncing it's going back and forth between the two because they're they're not working as a system they're doing this and they're going at different rates and so you and when that does that because it wants to go wide then turn in then wide then turn in as your steering angle sharpens less and sharpens lessons that causes the side to side a little bit of weave not a tank slapper kind of weave but just enough that you feel like what's going on you know you feel something a little out of sorts and then you tend to run a little slower can you ride around it yeah you can just kind of hang on and learn its limits and what it's going to do and you just sort of do it let it do its thing and you do around it but obviously that's not optimal so i was sitting there talking about the uh back and forth with dean a little bit about the exhaust because the exhaust is like 400 dollars. it's not that much money um but then i'm like do i want to do that and then have, uh, you know, not put that money towards the suspension. The exhaust, I mean, it's for a stock system, everybody's amazed. Response is good, it sounds great, it's running great. We got the fueling pretty damn good with my, 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 my test maps. We got some ignition advance, we got very aggressive throttle mappings. It's just a, a very lively experience now, and it sounds loud enough without being obnoxious and barking and all the stuff that kind of I like it I'm not going to say I don't like, loud, don't like loud exhausts, I do especially when it's a twin or a triple it's not all high pitched and whiny like a supercharged sewing machine like an R6 not that that scream is bad but you know what I mean I like the throat throatiness and the bark and the roar, you know, it just sounds mean the growls but it does attract a lot of unwanted attention at times. And certainly the law, if you're riding like a fool, it just it makes the bike sound louder than you may actually be going. So I kind of don't mind it being this sort of stealthy approach to things where it sounds good. It doesn't sound like a damn a blender, like I've got it all corked up and the exhaust is all, you know. It, it, this is the best sounding stock exhaust I've ever owned. A Panigale sounded pretty damn good for a stock exhaust. Um, but I haven't done a damn thing other than, you know, the, the DB killers are removable. Those little baffle inserts. It's a T30 bit. Reach in there with a T30 bit, give it a good, uh, the crack that's like a little tiny drop of a uh, spot weld. They just tack it, like, 
with a welder so that it doesn't, you know, it's permanent and it doesn't uh, back out on its own. But you just give it a, uh, and it snaps it, and then you just unscrew it, and the baffle slides out. Just like you, if you bought a set of Aero exhausts or Vance and Hines or anything else, they usually have removable DB killers. Stock ones came with them. And these US pipes don't have a cat in the mufflers. They just have that Xbox thing under the bike. So you still get a bunch of baffling happen there, but those mufflers are straight open. They're straight through there. They're basically aftermarket cans now. There's no difference between these other than size and weight and design, but as far as looks, but as far as like the flow, it's a straightforward two and a half inch wide pipe with perforated core and some fiberglass or steel wool wrapped around it. Just like an aftermarket can. Listen how brilliant this damn thing sounds. And you're only picking up the sound from my microphone in my helmet, my external mic. It's a good sounding bike. So uh, after talking to Dean, he kind of helped talk me into it. And then uh, I, I kind of half talked myself the other way into it, just saying, you know what, why would I spend $400 on something that, you know, yeah, okay, it's just going to make it louder. Nah. Why not make the bike ride better? Why not put the money into suspension? And I kind of am thinking about the same thing with my Mustang. At some point, I'm going over to Vengeance Racing with my checkbook, and we're going to do some mods. Whether it be long tube headers and a custom tune, whether I decide, you know what, I'm going to keep this car long term, and it's going to be my track car and fun car, and we're going to dump some money into it. And I'm going to put a, a Pro Charger or Whipple char Supercharger on it and a tune and get it up to five, 600 horsepower at the wheel. I maybe just do the pipe in a tune and make it a little more horsepower, better cold air intake, you know, and then leave it largely stock and just put money in the suspension and the tires. Make it, just make it amazing to handle, you know, and that's kind of where I'm at with this. The beauty of the yellow bike that I had, the Street Cup, yeah, I did the cam because I needed, I needed more horsepower than it had. But even then, we're only talking 63, 64 horsepower at the wheel on a good day. What made that bike so damn fun was upgrading the suspension and, and riding just the wheels off of it. And so that's what I want to do to this, but on another level. If this thing only makes 93, 94 horsepower at the wheel with my tune, maybe I'm at 95 horsepower. Someday I'll throw it on the dyno just to see. But I'm in the mid 90s with upper 70 foot pounds of torque. If it was my only bike, I'd be worried about all the performance, but I got a freaking ZX14 in the garage. If I feel the need for speed, I've got that. And there's very few bikes that can touch that. So that's where I think, you know what? Maybe just putting the money into the suspension, making this thing just handle amazing so that what it does, it just does it as, as best as it can. And I could go up to the mountains and play with guys in the twisties on an R6. And so long as I pick a road where there's no straightaways, I can hang with them or even beat them. Like that to me, I think it's going to be more satisfying than just having a couple extra horsepower and making it stupid loud. So Dean, you're right. I was right about you using Filmora and stop filming your shit at 480p. And uh, you were right about, you know, just put it in the suspension, man. Get the suspension dialed in. Make this a retro, basically a retro track bike. <laughs> I think that'd be freaking brilliant. But I'll tell you, these tires feel great. Flicking it through the turns, I mean, it's not, I, I don't have the time to get up to the mountains. I do have to get back to work, but um, maybe there's one other twisty road I could go on. But having this, uh, I think this is, these tires just feel great. You know, I had the Road 5s on two different bikes. One was a Sport Tour, one was a retro sport bike like this, the Z900 RS. And the Road 5s were amazing. I know people think, oh, it's a Sport Touring tire. Yeah, Sport Touring. The emphasis is much more on Sport than Touring. You look at the profile on these tires, the shape, See how sticky it is on the edge? That's a sport bike tire. It's got some extra siping to move water. So if I get in the rain, I could run a I could run a much faster pace on these than I could on any full-on sport bike tire if I get caught in the rain. I don't tend to ride in the rain, 
But if I did, and it has, you know, it happens. When I'm on Q3 Pluses or like Pirelli Super Courses, those are amazing tires in the dry, in the heat, and on track. But you get into some wet roads, oof. I'm, I'm tiptoeing through the turns, man. So, so far these feel very compliant. They're razor sharp handling. And the longevity, that's the thing. These are supposed to last even longer. I know people that get eight to 10,000 miles out of a set of these types of tires. Now, I don't know how they ride. But I do know that when I had the Road 5s, which were supposed to, you know, according to Michelin and their data and the reviews I've seen, were awesome, but not as good as these. These are a noticeable improvement in handling, longevity, and wet grip. And uh, I got 5,700 miles in a track day and still had tread left. I could have probably put another 1,000 miles if I really wanted to. I'm just really anal retentive. I don't wait till I'm on the wear bar. I'm not Cameron. I don't wait until I got belts. You know, I hear the sound of the belt slapping the mudguard in the back and go, oh yeah, it's time for a tire. Sorry, Cam. I don't do that. I'm not you. Uh, <laughs> he's not that bad, but... Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to get really good life out of these. I would expect, if, let's say if I don't do it, if I don't throw this on track, I would be amazed if I didn't get at least six, 7,000 miles out of these. So you look at what I paid for them, $511 for the set. Not, you know, with no, with no labor to install, just the price of the tires. That's a lot. But Q3 Pluses are $450 a set. <laughs> I mean, so you're not spending that much more money. I'm spending an extra 50, 60, 70 dollars or whatever for these, but I'm going to get three times the life out of them. And if I can ride these just as hard as I want, and I can even do a track day on them, and they're safer in the rain, why the hell wouldn't you? You know, I wouldn't put sport touring tires necessarily on an R1. When you got a bike that is just that fast and powerful, and that's the only kind of riding you're going to be doing, then yes, you go get the Super Sport tire. But today's Sport Touring tires, uh, the Angel Pirelli STs, the the Road Smart 4s from Dunlop, these Road 6s, these tires are, as far as sporting riding goes, they're every bit as capable as Michelin Pilot Powers and Dunlop Q2s and you know what you know the s21s and the the, the, the bike the, the tires that were the super sport tires two three years ago these are going to be as good as that but give you much more life it's harder on the top on the center compound and it's soft and and the silica compound on the side on these things you just feel the tire a lot of times you go to like a brand new tire and you rub your hand on the edge and it just kind of slides off because it's not been you know roughed up yet or uh, tires don't have to be broken anymore but it's not scuffed up at all these things your thumbs like G -g 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 -g, trying to rub across it because it's so goddamn sticky and that's a brand new tire sitting on the shelf you can feel how soft the side of the tire is and then you can feel that it's harder in the center you got the best of both worlds if you if you have a bike again if you got an r1 run run your q3 pluses your super courses real run that tire if you've got anything else, any kind of naked sport bike, and even 600s, because they don't have the horsepower of a freaking R1 or a ZX10 or a ZX14. Although I do know people that put the sport touring tires on the ZX14s. I'm on the fence on that. I think on that bike, I'm going to keep using the Q3 Pluses, unless I read something or see some kind of credible data and longevity reviews and things that you can put the other tires on, the Sport Touring tires on a ZX-14 without really compromising grip. But I'm not compromising grip on this thing. I'm just not. This thing's going to be awesome. I can already tell with these tires, and I know the tires that these replaced were brilliant. I took it out as a, on my, Z, my Z900 RS on the, on the... Is this the turn I want? No, fuck. Not the turn. No. Wrong intersection. 
Everything's torn up. <laughs> I want the next one. Um, I was like, ah, right, you know what? I'm just going to take the Z900 on track just for shits and giggles. And, you know, I get passed on the straightaways. I had no problem in the turns. No problem late break-in coming into 10A. And so some of the folks that would pass me on the straight, on the back straight, you know, I'd catch them back up uh, coming into 10A. They were fine. Those tires were awesome. I put, you know, I got the, you know, the Bridgestone had the T32s on the, uh, on the, my uh, Tracer 9GT, which I loved that bike. I was sad to see that go. I just could not make it not hurt my neck. I was really bummed about that. That bike had everything you want, nimble handling, electronic suspension, beautiful, cool dash, quick shifter, auto blip, heated grips, cruise control. I mean, you just go down the damn list. Luggage that just clicked on and off. Adjustable seat height. <laughs> I mean, that bike on paper was the perfect bike for me. It just didn't work. But anyway, when I first got it, had the T32 Bridgestone Sport Touring Tires. Now, that was a Sport Touring Tire I did not like. I got it, and granted, it was in the colder part of the year. It was late spring. But I had been up in the mountains on my other bike, on my R1, with Q3 Pluses, or maybe those were the R R10s or whatever that came with the super sticky tires. And I had no problem with the R1 stepping out or losing traction. In, in colder months, no less. But I went up there on those T32s, and I had the back end step out twice, getting on the gas in the turn. That was with the track control on. It caught it, but it was like a little twice, like pucker moment. I'm like, what the hell? Why is this thing moving around so much? I had 300 miles on those tires, and I called Cycle Gear. I, I was on my ride up in the mountains. I'm like, you got a set of Road 5s? So They're like, yeah. I said, good. Um, when I'm done with this ride, I'm heading straight home, ripping the tires off, throwing them in the back of the truck, and I'm, I'm heading over there. And it was brilliant. Um, those tires were just awesome. So these are their successor. Michelin makes a really good motorcycle. They make good car tires, too. I'm probably going to get a Michelin... Um, road... Pilot Road S's or something. I'm going to get some good... Uh, I'm not going to go with summer tires on the Mustang because they're going to suck in the summer in the winter time. But I'll get, you know, much better than the Pirelli P0 run flats I've got now. We'll get some all-season, you know, proper sport tires. Um, but Michelin makes great tires, man. The, 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 the 1RSs or the Cup 2s, whatever my squid friend Cameron rides. Um, those things just stick. They don't last for shit, but they do, they do stick well. Alright, got a couple little twisties here just to kind of feel the balance, but I'm telling you, man, like they're smooth. It's not super heavy, it doesn't look that big, but it's a big motor, it's steel frame, and you know, it's not a lightweight. It's a wet weight on these, like 480 or something like that, or it's it's you know up towards the 500 ish pound mark. But even with the front suspension being a little gooey. I know I'm not really railing on it here, but just rolling down the road and just feeling the how it moves back and forth, it's very precise. It, it, it's it's crisp. There's no wallowiness to the tires. I mean, the wallowiness, the wallowiness I feel is from the, the forks. to get these up to the mountains. Problem is it's going to take a couple weeks. Won't be uh, this weekend for sure with all the rain. And it won't be uh, next weekend because, well, you know what? I might be able to because I got the track day on Saturday. Oh, these feel great. I got the track day on Saturday on the 8th, but then Sunday... Maybe I'll go up to the mountains if the weather's good. Yeah. Ah, I 
like it. I like it a lot. Definitely feels good. So, there you have it. I know, not a, not a gnarly mountain run down Wolfpen Gap or the Dragon. But I don't have that kind of time. Gotta get back to work. Um, although, technically, by the time I get back, it's gonna be five. <laughs> All right, well, I took my lunch hour. I took my lunch break. I work from home. I took my lunch break from four to five, which I did, because when you work from home, you don't really take lunch breaks. You're just sitting there working at your desk and grab a sandwich. All right, go left, go left, go left, go left, you tool. Damn it, truck's coming. Well, at least they're booking. was coming up and then rev limiter killed it. I said the motor likes the cooler air for sure. Yeah, these tires are a definite win. I know this doesn't seem like I'm running any kind of fun pace or anything, but the turn in, they just feel very planted. They feel very agile and precise. And man, when we get these forks done, K-Tech makes really good stuff. So I'm excited about that. I, I didn't know much about Andriani. I've heard that they, you know, they have decent stuff. But I know that, you know, a lot of people go K-Tech, Race Tech, or Olin's. You know, those are like the big three for track gay guys and race guys and stuff like that as they go for one of those three companies typically. Um, or Attraction Dynamics is another one. They're a local company. Um, but I had the K-Tech Razor on my uh, Z900 and that completely transformed that bike. So I am much looking forward to that. And I think after that, um, you know, we'll get the suspension sorted. I've been toying with the idea of a steering damper. You know, people say, well, if you got the suspension set up right, you don't need it. Eh, true. But we've talked about that before. I, I think steering dampers make sense on every bike. Just because your suspension's set up does not mean you can't have a tank slapper or have things get out of sorts because you're on the side of the tire, powering out of a turn, and you hit a freaking rock or a bottle. You don't want to just take a bad suspension setup and try to fix it with a steering damper. But even a properly set up bike, you know, Mark Marquez's bike has a, and I'm pretty sure the engineers at Repsol Honda know what they're doing with suspension setup. And he doesn't have near, you say, well, he's going faster. Yeah, I get that. But he also doesn't have potholes and dogs running in front of him and rocks and gravel and all kinds of shit that we have on the road, so. Anyway, we're heading back to uh, Dave's garage, and that's my initial impressions. Stay tuned for a much more in-depth, much more lively ride up in the mountains. But so far, and I'm going to see if I can find some measurements on these tires, because I definitely feel like the ass end is up. I'm feeling definitely more pitched forward, which is fine. It sharpens up the steering. It's cool that it's doing it and it hasn't done it in a way that makes the bike feel twitchy because a lot of times when you raise the ass end up, yeah, you sharpen up the steering response, but you also make it a little twitchy if you get the steering angle too, too aggressive. But this feels great. So here we are back. Hello, other bikes. I missed you into our Baxley chalk. Bump. And step off. No kickstand needed. <laughs> Kickstands are for peasants. Anyway, that's what we got. Hope you enjoyed. Give me some questions. Obviously, we didn't put them through the, you know, the real pace, but I just realized, damn, I've had them on for a week, and I have not ridden them. I was going to ride Sunday. Sunday, we thought the weather was going to be shit, so we went up to the mountains, Jimmy and I, and did uh, the Dave and Dimmy show in the car. And it turned out to be nice weather the whole day.
We didn't really get much in the way of rain. I could have ridden, but Jimmy couldn't, so. Anyway, there you go. Another installment of Dave's Garage.